Come on, why don't we give a round of applause to our Lord God, because He is holy and He is worthy. I'm just going to invite the worship team just to come on up, and uh, just, it's good to see everyone. It's good to see all our friends and family here. So why don't we just get ready, why don't we just prepare our hearts just to worship the Lord God, amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all the praise and all the glory. You're holy. You're wonderful, Jesus. You know, this is the second Sunday of this year. And yet, many things have happened around the world. Maybe some of us have already experienced good things or things that, you know, maybe have changed our lives in one way or another. But regardless of what's happened already, we have to always remember that God is in control. That He is looking out for us. That He wants what's best for us. And this is a year that we can allow Him to change us and make something better out of each and every one of us. And sometimes that process can be very difficult. Sometimes that process can come with pain, sorrows, disappointments. But regardless of what God is doing, we must never take our eyes off of Him. Because He is the hope of glory. He is the one that gives us the strength, that gives us the power to overcome whatever may come our ways. He's the one that's given us the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. He's the one that's given us the authority to destroy the work of the devil. He has given us the authority to speak to the storms. It is the name of Jesus that changes everything. So let's not forget that. Amen? Let's give glory to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all the praise, God. Hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you glory. There's no one like you know. Come on, give him glory.
is near and my time has come still my soul will sing your unending praise a thousand years in the river oh bless the Lord bless the Lord oh my soul will shed You are 
and strong We're the greatest one of them all We're the greatest one of them all A name above all names so low Exalted You're the greatest one of them all You're the greatest one of them all
Hallelujah to the one and only God. Come on. Can you praise? Can you worship the Lamb of God? 
God today. Come on.
They hear my voice and they know, know that I am the one speaking to them and calling them to enter into my rest, says the Lord. Come to me, come to me. Just come to me, come to me, come to me, says the Lord. But just come as you are. And I will give you what you need. I will give you life. Life in abundance, says the Lord. I will give you joy. Not like the one that this world offers, but joy, joy. Joy in the Spirit, says the Lord. I will give you peace. Peace is what passes all understanding. Just come to me. Come to me. And I will break your chains. Set you free. Come to me. Oh Jesus, we give you glory, we give you honor. We give you all the praise. Lift your voice and your heart and pour out to the Lord before the Lord. Tell him it's great. Tell him it's wonderful. Tell him that he's great. your eyes close let the Lord minister to you let the Lord speak to you to your heart let the Lord fill you with his presence
the Lord reveals to me that there's someone or a few persons here today in this place that they feel that they've come to the end of the road. They feel that there's nothing else they can do. They find themselves in a situation where they, know, they don't know what to do. They tried it all. They try to do this and that and this and that. And nothing has worked. And then right now they find themselves just at the end of this road. If that is you in this place, I encourage you to lift your hand wherever you are. Just tell them, Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. Intervene in my life. I don't know what else to do. else to do. I've made all the mistakes again. And I know I'm here because of the decisions that I made. But yet I know that you can make a way and a path, but there is no path. I know that you can give me a chance. So Father, I pray for this chance. If that is you, just say, Lord, I cry out to you today this morning out for a change. I cry out for an opportunity. I cry out for you to forgive me, Lord God, because I stepped away from you. I did not listen to those voices around me, to your voice, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Heavenly Father, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Give you all the honor for you are God. For you are God. Do you believe that God can do all things? Do you believe that all things are possible with Him? Come on, give Him praise. Give Him praise. Give Him glory. We give you all the praise and all the glory, Lord God. You know, the Lord put something in my heart right now. And I want to invite you to pray for someone. Go to the person beside you, or if you want to go around the room and pray for someone. Remember, we go. We go do what God wants us to do. We go have an impact on people. I go where the Lord sends me. I go do what it tells me to do. I go. I'm a man of action, of faith. And God wants to use you today to bless them. So I invite you. Step in faith and pray for someone. Just bless them. Bless them. If they have a prayer request, let's pray for whatever is in their minds. I invite you to go around. Go around and pray for someone. Go pray. There's power in our prayers. How many believe that today? Do you believe that today? Come on. Go around and pray for someone. Pray for someone. Pray for the person behind you. The person in front of you. It doesn't matter where. Go pray for that person. Look for someone. Look for someone and pray for that person. They say the Lord blesses you. Come on, come on. Use the power of prayer. Use your faith this morning. Come on. Go find someone. Go find someone. Andres, go find someone. Come on, someone here needs it. We all need prayer. We all need prayer. Come on. It doesn't hurt us. It doesn't hurt us. Pray for someone. Believe. Just bless them, bless your lives.
believe with all your heart just pray pray for their health pray for them to grow to have an encounter with the Lord to be transformed to be changed pray for the chains to break for the heaviness to go Just bless him in the name of the Most High God. Bless your name. Father, bring consolation, Lord God. Bring comfort. Bring peace, Lord God, to their lives. Change and transform them. We give you glory, oh Jesus. Heavenly Father, we praise you. We give you glory, Lord God. Thank you for my brother. Thank you for my sister. Lord God. Thank you for this family, for this church. Thank you for everyone in this place. Come on, let's give glory to the Lord. Come on, praise him. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh. We give you praise. Amen. Can you feel His presence today? Can you feel His peace? Come on, can you feel the love? He's in this place. Amen. And with that in mind, let's just welcome everyone. Welcome everyone, our guests this morning. Come on, let's go around and give a hug to someone. Say hello to someone. So God bless you and Jesus loves you. Give a kiss to someone. Come on.
Good morning. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. If you'd like to take your seats, you may. Amen. Why don't we just give a round of applause to our Lord God, because He is great. Amen. Amen. Lord, we give you all the praise and all the worship, Lord. All right, as everyone's just getting down to the seats, uh, we'll just uh, say hello to our guests who are here today. My friend, we have Clint in the back. Hello, Clint. Welcome. And we have our, our amigo, Oscar. Welcome. We know you were here last week. Welcome again. And to the right, we have Octavio. Welcome, Octavio. It's good to have you. Amen. Amen. So why don't we just get started with the announcements, everyone. Uh, just as you know, Mondays, we have our class of the supernatural. And right now, we are doing our classes of the prophetic. So I just invite and encourage everyone to come on out. I started coming this past year in September, and it's truly helped me out and just give me a better understanding. And on Wednesdays, we have our worship nights at 8 o'clock, as well as Mondays, 8 o'clock. Um, it's in my child again, you know, we can just come and worship our Lord God freely, just time singing, you know, we, we see each other, even more fellowship. And just a continuation, Fridays, our connect groups are back on. So we have the one at my house up in Richmond Hill. We have Reinhardt's in Woodbridge North, and we'll have Nick's, which is just down on the plaza right here. And a special announcement, where are all the men at? Where are all the men at? Come on, let me hear it. Hey, let's go, boys. All right, uh, just a reminder to all our men that we do have our wing night out this coming Tuesday. So I want to see everyone there. And uh, we are making a big change, though, so if you could all pay attention. We are moving our wing night out to, is it a St. Louis? Yes, to a St. Louis on Bayview and 401 at around eight o'clock. Well, Reinhardt will give us, send a message tomorrow, most likely just to remind everyone, but we are moving it to Bayview and the 401 area, just so it can accommodate all of us who come from out east and west, north and south, just kind of like a center point. So it's just easier for all of us to access it. Cool? All right, uh, that's it for the announcements. We'll just do our tithings and offerings. And I'll just get Mike to hold the basket for me. So why don't we just bow down our heads and just prepare for the Lord. Father, we just give you all the praise, Lord. We thank you because you are great, Lord God, and you are holy. Lord, we thank you for all the blessings that you've given us and for all the blessings that are yet to come. Lord, we just give in these offerings and tithes, Lord, knowing that that, you know, it's just for your kingdom, Lord God. And Lord, we pray that you bless it, Lord. And we pray that you multiply it, Lord God. And we just give you thanks for, for just the jobs that we have, Lord, and our finances, Lord God. We pray that you just bless them as well, Lord. So in the name of Jesus, amen and amen. All right, if you want to come up and uh, just give to the basket, you may. Just a reminder, we, we do have our Interact e-transfer. So if you don't want to go to the bank or anything, you know, you can always just give online to Verbo Church. So yeah, so it's info at verbo.ca. And if anyone needs an envelope or anything, Chris is walking around if you need it. If not, it's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Amen. Thank you. And I'm just going to ask for the kids to go to their schools to learn. So all kids, you can go off to your classes. Look at all them. Look at them running. Aren't they adorable? Look at that. Little cute kids. I personally like seeing kids with their big backpacks when they go to school because they're too big for them, but they don't make them smaller. And I'll just call up on Reinhardt, who has the word for today. And why don't we just bow down our heads and just pray for him. So, Father, we thank you for Reinhardt, Lord God. We thank you for his life, Lord God. And we thank you for all the things that you're doing in him, Lord. Lord, we pray you just bless him with even more wisdom, Lord God. Even more of your spirit, Lord God. Even more knowledge, Lord God. Lord, we pray that you just give him, bless him with even more health, Lord God. So, Lord, we thank you for his life and for what you've prepared in him today, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 How's everyone doing today? You guys are doing great? 
Come on, you guys enjoying the new year so far? We have to be grateful always with God, even in the good times and the bad times. You know, the Lord says that we must give thanks for everything. All things for the work for the good for those that love God according to His purpose. Amen. So God bless everyone. It's so good to be back. As you know, uh, we went to uh, Texas for three days with Ramon, myself, and uh, Nick and Vanessa are also down there. They're actually uh, preaching in a church down in Dallas. So they dragged him, they threw him under the bus, and they say, you're coming to preach. So I know Nick right now is preaching in Texas right now. So that's a great, great blessing, guys, for us to be able to minister to other churches as well, to give what God has given to us, and to show you that God is doing great things among us. Amen? So this, uh, uh, I guess, trip, the purpose of this trip, again, was for leadership training, is for all the presiding elders or all the pastors, lead pastors, to go and receive not only equipping, but also receive ministering and so that we can focus our vision and always make sure that we're continuing in the same spirit, the same accord, that we know that we have the support from the whole congregation, the whole ministry, variable ministries, um, so that we can do what God wants us to do, which is the Great Commission, which is to go and to make disciples. How many are going? How many went this week? Did you go this week? Remember that our new name now is no longer Verbal Christian Ministries as a church. Our name is now International Gospel Outreach Canada. That is the name that we have now, and that's why we're going to use I Go. Where did you go with the gospel today? Where did you go with the gospel yesterday? Where did you go with the gospel this week? We must be putting it in practice always. Making sure that without action, without works, our faith is absolutely dead, useless. Amen? Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for this wonderful day, Lord God. We thank you for the blessings. We thank you for everyone that is here today, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, because we know that you're doing new things among us. And we know, Lord God, that you're raising disciples. You're raising people, Lord God, to carry on, Lord God, the command that you gave us, which is to go and to make disciples of the nations. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just glorify your name and we give you all the praise for you are Lord and you are God. And we submit to you, God, to your authority and to your power. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you. Amen and amen. Before we get started again, I want to welcome everyone that is here today. I see again the family from Brazil. God bless you guys. Good to have you here. Let's give them also a big welcome, guys. You know, um, also, I want to acknowledge something that, uh, you know, this week uh, or the last few weeks, couple of weeks, a couple of people have passed away. One of them is uh, Jose and Karina. Jose and Karina, they were here from Monterey, here for three, four months. And unfortunately, I got the news. I sent the message yesterday that, um, you know, his father, Jose's father, passed away as he was getting down, coming, but returning to Mexico. I know that God gave him enough chance just to be there as well. But uh, again, they're asking for our prayers to keep him in, in mind so that God can bring peace and consolation. I know no one wants to hear this sort of news, but sometimes we have to understand that God has a, a greater plan, a greater purpose for us to know that all of us one day will no longer be here. One day we will go on and move on with the Lord. One day we will leave this world behind, everything that we made, all of our accomplishments, all of our medals and trophies that we acquired, we will leave it all behind and we will move on to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. Also, Gina's uh, father, I believe, also as well, passed away in the last couple of weeks. I was just told this, and um, I just wanted to make a prayer, guys, and, 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 and to ask the Lord to bring consolation, not only to Gina's heart, but also to the family, and also the same thing with Jose. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you, because, Lord, we don't understand everything. We don't know why sometimes people have to die, whether young or old. We don't know. You know what the purpose sometimes is behind all things but one thing we know is that your will is perfect and is good and that you've assigned a specific amount of days for us to live in this world you know exactly when people are going to be born and you know exactly when people will also pass away but lord we know that you're in control and we know that your peace surpasses all understanding that even when we feel sorrow when we feel sad your peace 
your Holy Spirit can bring comfort to our hearts, Lord God. So, Father, we pray for that comfort for Gina's family and for her heart. The same thing with Jose and Karina, Lord God. Father, we ask, Lord God, that you bless him and you strengthen the whole family. And that you bring that joy, Lord God, that although sometimes tears may be, Lord God, but our hearts are, you know, overflowing with that joy, knowing that it is from your spirit, Lord God, your Holy Spirit. They bring us the joy to know, Lord God, that they are with you, Father. In the name of Jesus, we give you all the praise and all the glory. Amen and amen. Amen. Well, God bless you guys again. I want to emphasize again that our name is International Gospel uh, Outreach and that we're working on uh, making some changes. As you know, we have a new website. Hopefully, we'll launch the website this week. And uh, we're going to be changing a lot of things. Among those things is that every week, I'm going to be sending throughout the WhatsApp uh, chat uh, group uh, a study. We want you guys to begin to study the Word of God. We want you to begin to study you know, the foundations and, and the principles that we're all about. And we want you guys to go through these uh, topics and messages uh, that you will receive a link to the website so you can read them so that we can all be in the same mindset in the same um, you know spirit understanding the growth God wants and expects for all of us remember God wants us to grow the growth comes from him we are the ones that may be sowing or planting or adding water but the growth comes from the Lord himself and all of us must grow we must bear fruit and that fruit must also be good fruits because the world out there needs to see the evidence of the transformation that Jesus brings to our lives when we allow him to change us as well. Amen? So that is one of the changes we're going to be doing. And I want you guys to begin to, to, to really make an effort in studying these things that we're going to be sending you. Again, I'm not going to push you to do it. But I'm going to encourage you to do it because it's for your own good. It's because we want to see you mature. We want to see you grow. We want, to be, we want to see you become that disciple that will go and make an impact in the nations, in neighborhoods, in the platforms that God has given to us. Amen? The other thing that we'll be doing is we're going to be, uh, in February, we're going to be launching, again, um, um, some videos, again, from all the prophetic in different areas that we do so that if you're not able to come on a Monday night, you can watch them. But we still encourage you to come on the Monday night because every disciple needs to be able to learn how to minister to other people. Every disciple needs to learn how to hear God's voice. Every disciple needs to know what's going on in the spiritual realm so that we can be effective in destroying, you know, uh, the work of Satan on people's lives and bring him into the light through Jesus Christ as well. Amen. Also, a reminder that when you give, we're giving to Variable Christian Ministries. That is the name of the corporation, the name of the nonprofit corporation. And, and we will be issuing the receipts, donation receipts, again, through Variable Christian Ministries. Again, so that I just want to make sure that you understand that and that uh, our name will not change our legal name. Uh, when we operate, it is just simply the image that we will have with the idea to attract people from different cultures. It will be called International Gospel Outreach. I go. Amen? So, God bless you guys. So, I want to tell you that this trip, we actually were able to talk about a lot of things. God spoke to us and confirmed that the step that we were taking into changing the name of the church with the idea to attract and to impact and to change the mentality and to break many religious mindsets is actually was confirmed by the Lord down there in Texas. Many people spoke to us, they prophesied to us, and God confirmed that this change truly is from the Holy Spirit. And I want you to understand this in your heart, because if you don't, you will reject the change. You will reject all the things that are coming our way. You will begin to reject the process that God has for our lives to bring transformation and to bring change to every single one of us. And if we reject that change, we will not see the results. We will not see the fruit. We will not see the reward that God has for every single one of us. Amen? So today's topic is discipleship. And we're going to talk about what does a disciple look like. And again, you may say to me, well, I kind of know this already because when I read in the Bible, I see what the disciples are doing. And yes, it's true in some ways. We can see the disciples going out 
and healing the sick, casting out demons, raising the dead, preaching the, in the kingdom of God, the good news of the kingdom. But we also see them doing other things and having very specific characteristics to their character, to the way they thought, to the way they behaved, to the reasons why they did the things that they did, to the way they submitted to their authorities and so forth. So a disciple looks in a very particular way because we know just because we say Lord, Lord does not mean that we are a disciple of Jesus Christ. How many know that Jesus is looking for disciples? Do you know that? Only a few. Half of you know that. God wants you to become a disciple of his son, Jesus Christ. God wants you to understand that, that a disciple is someone who's able to transform the life of someone else through the message of Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit. God wants you to understand that a disciple is someone who's not waiting around for something to happen, but rather makes things happen. A disciple is someone who's able to teach God's word, but at the same time continue to learn so that the Holy Spirit can continue to do something in their lives and through them. A disciple is also someone who recognizes the Holy Spirit in their life and operating through them and is able to release the power of God through the name of Jesus, through the Holy Spirit as they've been, you know, um, um, you know baptized through the power of the Holy Spirit as well. So a disciple is someone who begins to reflect a transformation of life. A transformation not only for themselves, but begins to transform the life of other people as well. And I want us to go to Matthew 7 and start off here. And again, these are scriptures that many of us have heard many times. But I'm doing this talk today, this message today, so that we can identify if our heart is in the right place, if we're truly longing to become Jesus' disciples, or if we're just simply here just to get along and go along with the ride and get the blessings and not worry or not be interested in the one who gives the blessings. So Matthew 7, it says like this, verse number 21. Matthew 7, verse 21. And if you look at the heading on this, it says, true and false disciples. So it begins to give us a distinction of what a false disciple looks like. Okay? And it says like this. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. I want you to understand that just because you believe in Jesus does not guarantee that you will enter the kingdom of heaven. Just because you believe in the Bible does not mean you will enter the kingdom of heaven. Just because you believe there are angels and there's a Satan does not mean you're guaranteed to enter into the kingdom of heaven. It says, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Who will enter into the kingdom of heaven? Who? The ones who do the will of the Father. That does not mean some of the will. The one that does all of the will of God. Because sometimes as Christians, we use and we pick the things that we like or the things that we think are easy. And we reject those things that we do not like or approve or accept. Or simply we do not want to sacrifice or let go of certain things in our lives. Because it requires change and transformation on our part. And therefore we do not want to let go sometimes of our sinful nature or character or behavior that sometimes we have. So if you are a disciple, the first thing you must understand is that you must Follow and obey the will of the Father. All of it, not just some of it. Right? It says, 22. Many will say to me, will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name drive out demons? And your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evil doers. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Isn't this harsh? You would think, wow, I mean, couldn't Jesus have a little bit more compassion on these guys? They're going out there, spreading the good news of the kingdom. They're telling people that Jesus loves them. They're doing good things for the kingdom. They're maybe giving the food to the poor. They're doing all kinds of things. They're prophesying, casting out demons, doing all kinds of things. But they're not doing the will of the Father. In other words, they're evil doers. They practice lawlessness. They do not obey the word of God. They do as they want to. They may have good intentions, 
but because they're not doing everything that God wants them, they run the risk of not entering into the kingdom of heaven. So just because we're doing things for God does not guarantee that we will enter into the kingdom of God. But we must understand that He expects us to do what? To obey the will of the Father in heaven. Are you obeying the will of God? Are you being obedient to all His commandments? Are you doing what He said, what He sent you to do? Are you looking to please Him by not only obeying His Word, reading His Word, getting to know His Word, putting His Word into practice, being you know, diligent to seek Him out and to make sure that everything that is written down, everything that He's told you to do, everything that He's asking of you that is being done and that is being met and that you're putting the effort to do it. Yes, we know that we all make mistakes. Yes, we know that we all sin in some way or another. But we have the grace of God. We have the blood of Jesus that now we can come before the throne of God and ask Him to change us. So again, I want you to understand this. That a key factor here into recognizing someone who's a true disciple of Jesus is that they do the will of the Father. They obey the will of the Father. They obey the commandments of the Father. Just because someone has power does not guarantee they will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Just because someone is able to do miracles and someone is able to prophesy does not guarantee them and does not guarantee that they're also people of God. Look at the fruits. And therefore, he goes, look at this, verse 24. Notice it starts with the word, therefore. So in other words, he's explaining what he just said. So therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, yet it did not fall, because it had its foundations on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because they, he thought that he taught as one who had authority and not as their teachers of the law. Jesus was always telling people, do not do what you see the Pharisees do. Do what they tell you to do, but do not follow after what they do. Why? Because they were whitewashed tombs. They were religious people that they knew the word of God. They knew everything that the Bible said. But yet their lifestyles did not reflect that of a true disciple or a true teacher of the law. Right? So the first thing is that we will see that a true disciple is someone who abides in God's word. Let's look at this. John 8, 30, 32. John 8, verse 30 to 32, says like this. And he spoke these words, many believed in him. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. So if you abide in me, then you will truly be my disciples indeed. How many people here are not reading the Word of God? How many people are not even looking to know or trying to figure out what the Bible says? How many people here are not even interested in knowing what the Bible says? If we are His disciples, if we want to begin to step up to that level, if we want to begin to be call ourselves followers of Jesus, disciples of Jesus, begin to speak like Him, talk like Him, think like Him, and reflect everything that He was, the first thing that we have to do is we have to abide in Him. Jesus is the Word of God. We cannot reject the Word of God. If we reject what He said, then we're rejecting Jesus and the one who also sent Him. We must accept what He says. So if we abide in His Word, then we're truly, indeed, His disciples. Now notice the next part. And you shall, it says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. A true disciple is someone who is being set free constantly 
through the revelation, through the knowledge that is coming into his heart, through the knowledge and the wisdom that God is revealing through Jesus Christ, through his word, into his heart, that is causing a change, a transformation from within, that then will begin to reflect on the outside. How many people do you know that know the Bible inside and out, but yet their lives do not change? How many people do you know that they know all the scriptures in the world, and they can tell you left, right, and left, and center, exactly what the Bible says, but you look at their lives, you look at their families, and you say, wait a minute, something's not right here. They're not living what the Bible says. The Bible is not changing them. The Bible is not transforming their lives. The Bible is not setting them free. The Word of God has not set them free yet from all the bondage that they have and they carry in this world. Why? Because they're not abiding in the Word of God. They're not meditating in the Word of God. They're not looking to find out and to know what the Word of God actually says. But when the truth comes into your heart, then you're set free. Not into the mind. Everybody may know the scriptures. But when the revelation comes into your heart, it becomes part of you. You digest it. You accept it. You embrace it. You live it. You breathe it. You eat it. Then it begins to change you from within first. How many people have, have seen or heard of when someone comes to the Lord, the first thing people tell them is, hey, you, you look different. There's something different about you. Hey, how come your face is not as angry as it used to be? How come you're not swearing like you used to? How come you're not drinking like the way that you used to drink? Come on, you were the one always to bring out the tequila first and the shots, and, and now you're not even interested in going out with us. What's wrong with you? That's because... Transformation began to take place from within. Joy began to take place from within. Peace began to come in. Chains began to be broken. That is how we know when someone is a true disciple. We see change. We see transformation. We see chains being broken. Walls tumbling down. We see freedom. And this freedom does not mean that we will not have problems. Yes, we will always have problems. Yes, we will always have tribulations. But the freedom to know that nothing can hold me back, the freedom to know that God loves me, the freedom to know that I can pursue Him and nothing can stop me from pursuing Him. I can go and go and go after His treasures, His word, His wisdom, His knowledge, the life that He gives to us. But yet many people are in bondage. They're in bondage. They say, Jesus, Jesus, come and help me. They know the word, but they don't abide in it. They don't live it. They don't practice it. So that is the first thing that we know when someone is a true disciple of Jesus Christ. They abide in God's word. The second, let's go to John 13, 35. It says that love becomes a characteristic. They love their neighbor. And he's able to forgive those around him. John 13, 35 says like this. By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. If you have love for one another. You can't tell me you're a disciple of Jesus Christ if you hate your mom. You can't tell me that you're a disciple of Jesus Christ if you hate your children, you hate your husband, you hate your wife, you hate your neighbor, if you hate someone here in the congregation, you can't even speak to them, you can't even look at them. You can't tell me you're a disciple of Jesus Christ if you hate your boss, if you hate people around you, if you can't stand people. You cannot tell me that you're a disciple of Jesus Christ because His love is not abiding in you. You're not able to forgive. And I'm not saying that you know, that none of us will get, of course we will get hurt. People will come and they will accuse us falsely. They will hurt us in one way, whether knowingly or unknowingly. They will betray us. They will cause all kinds of things that will make, might bring pain or disappointment in our life. But we must learn to forgive. Why? Because God the Father said, He said to us, for Jesus says, If you don't forgive those that have transgressed you, those that have hurt you, those that have abused you, those that have insulted you, those that have betrayed you, those that left you hanging, I will not forgive the sins that you have. 
Forgiveness. You know, I'll tell you, I don't know about you, but sometimes it says we, 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 we all say this in some ways. Oh, yeah, I forgive him, I forgive him, but I don't want to see the guy. So why not? I just don't want to see it because our hearts are hurt. And sometimes there may be still pain there. But when we choose to forgive someone, the pain may still be there. But we're able to come and bless them and begin to at least look at them. And say, brother, you hurt me. You hurt me. Because the Bible says if your brother sins against you, what do you should do? It says go in them in private. Go to them and tell them that they hurt you, that they sinned against you. You know, so many times we do not practice this. And because we do not practice this, we keep all the anger, the resentment, the pain, and the bitterness inside. And the other person could be fresh as a lettuce, doing what he wants to do. And he never knows, so they never find out that they actually said something to hurt you. And we assume in our heads, we begin to think beyond what is there, and the devil begins to feed that thought. Oh, look at that guy, look at that guy, look at that guy. Oh, he know, look what they did to you, look what they did. And the person will not even be aware that they hurt you. We must learn to forgive. Because God's love has to abide, has to be in us. Right? Now, look what uh, Jesus says to, to Peter here. Matthew 18, 21 to 23. And this is the parable of the unforgiven servant. It says, Then Peter, verse 21, came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me? And I forgive him. Up to seven times. Jesus said to him, No, this. I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times 70. In other words, do not stop forgiving those that hurt you in one way or another. If you're a disciple of Jesus Christ, believe me, you will learn to forgive. His love will be in you. You will ignore the offense. And you will do and help even your own enemies. The people that criticize you. The people that speak behind your back. The people that accuse you falsely. The people that may be envious of you. The people that may think that they're better of you. A true disciple is someone who loves his neighbor. And if we are his disciples, his love must be in this place. Can you feel God's love? When we say hello to each other, when we hug each other, when we welcome each other, of course we can feel his love. He's in this place. But is he in your family? Is he at the core of that? You make the change. You make the difference. You bring the kingdom of heaven within you wherever you are. You are the one that can decide to forgive and ignore the offense, or you're the one that can add more fuel to the fire. You decide what to do. You are a disciple. The third thing is that a disciple must live and teach God's word. Matthew 28 says like this. This is the Great Commission. We all know this scripture we read it last time. It says, then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into the mountains which Jesus had appointed to them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. So the first thing is, he's saying, go. Go and make disciples. How can we make a disciple if we ourselves are not disciples? We have to start somewhere. We have to start by learning God's word. That's why it says, go and make disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And teach them to observe all the things that I've taught you, that are written in this place, in this Bible. Teaching my ways. How many of you are teaching somebody else God's word? How many of you are being 
intentional in saying this person needs to know the truth. I need to tell him that what he's doing is wrong. I need to tell him that his thoughts are not aligned to what he thinks he's doing right. Of course, we're going to start with our children. And unfortunately, many people think, you know what, let me just bring my children to church and let the church teach my children the ways of God. But the Bible says, no, we must do it. Parents must be the ones teaching the Bible to the kids. Parents must be the ones to teach the ways of the Lord to the kids. We as parents must be the one discipling our own children, taking them to that process so that they will be men and women of God that will never part from God. But if I'm waiting for the church to do it for me, then you are not even teaching the word of God to your own family. We have to start somewhere. A true disciple will know the word and will also be able to teach the word of God. Are you a disciple or not? you want to be a disciple or not? The Bible says that the ones that are great in the kingdom are those that serve others and those that are able to teach his ways, his principles to other people. We must understand that God wants us to grow. He wants us to mature. He wants us to be the ones that make the difference. He wants us to believe that we are the ones that have the answers through His Word to every problem that comes our way. Because it is His wisdom through the Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and truth and revelation that comes through us, that we are able to bring life to people. We're bring, to bring clarity to people. We're able to speak. And the Holy Spirit brings conviction of sin so that there can be a transformation of heart, a transformation of life. That is what a true disciple does. Disciple is what he wants. He wants to make you into a disciple, turn you into a disciple, because a disciple will teach others the word of God. They will know how to use it. They will know how to live it. They will know how to implement it in their life. And they will teach others how to do the same. That is a true disciple. Number four. A true disciple also will pay the price daily. A price for what? A price... To be with Jesus, to be like Jesus, to think like Jesus. You know how many people out there are going through all these seminars and, you know, and people talk about, you know, uh, uplifting you and going all these, uh, uh, you know, people that I guess are professional talkers and they encourage you and you lift you up and they, they build you up and they try to get you going to feel, make you feel good about yourself. You know, there's many out there. Yet, it is the Lord, the Lord himself, that said to us, and this is what he said to us in Luke 9. Luke 9, verse 23 says, Then he said to them, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself. And take up his cross daily, not, not once a year. Now when Christmas comes, daily and follow me. If anyone desires to come after me, pick up your cross daily and follow me. Follow me. That means that I got to go where Jesus is going. Where is Jesus going? Where is he walking? What is the road that he set for me to walk in? I have to deny myself. Lord, I want to go to the movies. There's nothing wrong going to the movies. But then I could also go and serve you. Lord, I want to do this, but Lord, you're calling me to preach your word. I don't, I don't, I don't want to preach your word. I want to do this. You got to say, deny yourself. Come after me. Follow me. Pick up your cross. Deny yourself to the desires of your own flesh. Pay the price. Come and follow me. Verse 26, sorry, 24 says, 
For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and is himself destroyed or lost? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his own glory and in his fathers and of the holy angels. But I tell you the truth, there are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the kingdom of God. A true disciple will go after the things of God, will go after Jesus. There's nothing wrong in making money. There's nothing wrong in working. There's nothing wrong in having a great business. There's nothing wrong in any of that stuff. But when our heart pursues the things of this world rather than the things of God, when our heart is longing, desiring more from this world rather than the things of God, that means that we're not in tune with him. We're not thinking like him. We do not have his heart. We still have the heart of this world. We are the result of the environment that we grew up in. A disciple is someone that can teach God's word, someone who is teachable, but someone who pays a price to become like Jesus. It's a price to be paid. It's a price that we pay to have the freedom. He gave it to us freely, but to walk in that freedom, know the word of God, to walk in the word of God, to live in the word of God, and the word of God comes and sets us free. Because if we do not change this, Jesus may come and set us free and heal us. We will go back to the, our old ways and things will become worse. If your mind is not changing, your behavior will not change. If you're not transforming your mind, thinking differently, thinking like God, then the fruit and the result in your life will always be the same. You cannot expect to have good fruit in your life if what you put inside of you is garbage, if all you do is watch the soap operas, if all you do is watch Netflix, if all you do is you fill and saturate your mind with all this garbage and don't put good seed in you, the fruit will be bad. You want good fruit? Put good seeds in there. You want a good life? Walk according to what the Bible says. Matthew 8, 8, verse 18, it says, When Jesus saw a great multitude about him, he gave a command to depart to the other side. Then a certain scribe came and said to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nest, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Then another of his disciples said to him, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, follow me and let the dead bury their own. If you came to Christianity because you think that somehow you're going to acquire all the promises and that by the end of your life you'll have two or three cars parked in your garage, living in a big huge house with all the money that you ever wanted, and thinking, thank you, Jesus, because you've blessed me like this. If you think that's going to happen, if that is the reason why you come to the Lord, then believe me, you're here for the wrong reasons. Yes, he wants to bless you. Yes, he's going to prosper us. But that is the fruit of a change, a transformation that happened from within. Started with the way we think. What point is there to have all that if I have no peace? What point is for me to have all the money in the world 
if I'm sick all the time? What point is there for me to have the three cars that I always wanted if I'm always fighting with my wife and my children? What point is there for me to have all the money in the world and yet when I think I have it all, all of a sudden my life gets taken away from me? What is the point of all that? I'm not able to receive the things that God has the ones who give me has given me freely his love, his peace, his joy his word Luke 14 26 this is this Luke 14 26 it says if anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother wife and children brothers and sisters yes even their own life such a person cannot be my disciple wow this is this is something that is hard to to think and to say why would jesus want me to hate my father no he's not asking you to hate your father why would jesus want me to hate my wife my children no he's not asking you to do that he's saying that we must love him above all things we must love him above our own spouses, above our children, above the things that we have, about our own family members. We must put Jesus first and follow him no matter what, even if we have to follow him by ourselves, without our wives and without our children. You know, Nick says it all the time. He says it to his wife. I say it to my wife all the time. He says, I'm going to serve God no matter what. I mean, I love God more than I love you. And I pray that you love me also, that you love God more than you love me. I pray that you love him with all your heart, all your strength, more than you love me or the children or the things that God has given to us. Why? Because it is only when we love him that we're willing to sacrifice for him. Can you sacrifice for Jesus? Are you willing to let go of your friends for Jesus? Are you willing to let go of your lifestyle for Jesus? Are you willing to let go of your maybe uh, character issues for Jesus? Are you willing to let go of your behavior, the swearing, the misbehaving, the patterns of behavior that we may have? Are we willing, we willing to let go of maybe what we do on the weekends, what we do on a Friday night, what we do on a Saturday night for Jesus? Are we willing to do all those things for him and sacrifice for him? Or do we love our friends more than him? Do we love the movies and the entertainment more than him? Do we love more the things that he has for us? And number five is the disciple transforms the, the lives of the people and the nations. A disciple is able to transform a nation. A disciple is able to transform the life of someone else, a family in despair, a drug addict that may be on the streets. A father that may be thinking of committing suicide. The disciple is able to transform. A couple that is about to get divorced. Someone who's just been diagnosed with cancer. A nation that may be parting away from God. A true disciple has the power within, the power of the kingdom of heaven, the power of Jesus Christ at his disposal. To transform people, nations. This is what a true disciple looks like. And although maybe some of us are find ourselves in different ways or different, I guess, uh, sections of this road called Jesus, this way called Jesus, we must embrace what he wants for us. 
we must allow him to transform our lives and to take us from being just a child that wants to eat just simply milk to being a full-grown man or full-grown adult in the Lord in the spirit that can cause damage begin to transform lives to begin to teach others the ways of God to begin to tell the, the devil and to cast out the devil from anywhere any place any person in the name of Jesus we need to be those that bring the light rather than our light become diminished by the circumstances around us. We need to be those that bring hope to people, those that go and make a difference in someone's life, those that will have the right answers, the right words to those problems, those circumstances, those people that are looking to hear something beyond what they've heard all their lives, to those that will bring truth to people that will set them free. That is what a disciple looks like. Are you a disciple? Do you want to be a disciple? Let's pray the price. Let's bring glory to our Father by bearing fruit, by letting Him change us, by letting Him bring change and transformation to our lives. That's what it means to go and make disciples. How can I go if I'm not a disciple? That's what we tell you. What is our purpose? We teach this all here all the time. Our purpose is to glorify God in everything that we do. What is the vision? Again, yes, the vision is to disciple the nations. But first, God's vision for us is, is segmented in three areas. One is to be conformed to the image of Christ. That means that God is going to work on you. God is going to take away all those bad attitudes, that bad character that we all have. He's going to begin to shave it off, to polish it up, because he wants you to begin to look like, to think like, and to behave like Jesus Christ, his son. That is the first thing. The second thing is to work towards the unity of the body of Christ, to keep everyone together, to make peace, to make the peace and to leave the peace so that none of us will be divided, will be separated in thought, will be separated, but will be united in the same spirit, in the same love that God has brought for us. And the third is to go out and make disciples. But I can't go out and make disciples if I'm divided with my brother, if I'm fighting with my brother, if I can't forgive my brother, if I do not love my brother, if I do not see him the same way that we are part of the same family. I cannot go out and make a difference because people will not see that the love of God is in our lives. And if I do not let him change my character, believe me, my character will be my stumbling block. I will make mistakes. People will begin to, you know, to, to, to have conflict with me all the time. And when the time comes to go out and do God's work, my flaw, my, 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 my character that is flawed will make me go down and tumble down. Let God work on you. Let Him change you. Let someone disciple you. Let someone tell you the ways of God and teach you the ways of God. This is not discipleship. What I'm doing here, I'm just telling you. Discipleship is a change of lifestyle. It's me spending time with you or someone spending time with you, eating with you, laughing with you, telling you, and you allowing them to see what's happening in your life. What is it that you're thinking? What is it that you're, is going through your mind? How is it that you behave? Why do you make the decision? So that the word of God that is in me or whoever may be discipling can be released to you and the truth will come and begin to set you free from all that bad character, the decisions that you make and allowing his life to come in and change your life let someone disciple you submit to the Lord seek his ways let someone teach you his word spend time with someone that is godly someone that knows more than you do let someone sow into you So the transformation can take change. If you tell me, Ryan, I've been through that already. Okay, are you changing people now? Are you the one looking to see who you can disciple? Are you the one going to places, to families, to your friends, to your co-workers, and discipling them, changing them, transforming them? Or is your life just filled with fear, with doubt, with bitterness, with resentment?
with anger. You've forgotten to go. You're stale. You're no longer putting this into action. You're no longer giving what has been given to you. You're no longer multiplying what is in you. disciple is someone who looks like Jesus talks like Jesus behaves like Jesus reflects Jesus that is the goal he is the goal he is the race we run the race and he is the prize to become like Jesus to be like Jesus to be with Jesus to think like Jesus. How can I think like Jesus if I'm not allowing his word to come into my mind? How can I behave and do the things that he did if I'm not reading or knowing what he wants me to do? The Bible says that Jesus spent time three and a half years with his disciples. And after he left and was taken up to heaven, people began to call his disciples Christians. They say, weren't you Jesus? Well, you talk like him. You're doing the same things that he's doing. You behave like him. So people call disciples Christians for the first time because they reflected the life of Jesus Christ. God wants disciples. Jesus is looking for disciples. We are a church that disciples people to send them to go to their neighbors, to the nations, to wherever it is. We bear fruit, good fruit, because He has given us good seed. It is His word that changes, transforms us through the power of the Holy Spirit. It is time to grow, time to grow, time to mature, time to face our fears. Go. It is time to go. Go make disciples. Close your eyes. I want you to reflect on a moment. If, this, if being a disciple of Jesus Christ is something that you want. You may not know the answer to this, but God is telling you, I want you to be my disciple. He's asking you today, do you want to be my disciple? Do you really, really, really want to be my disciple? If the answer is yes, what price are you willing to pay to become my disciple? That is you today. Wherever you are, just keep your eyes closed. If you truly want this for this year, say, Lord, I really want to be your disciple this year. I want to grow. I want to be intentional. I want to teach others your word. I want to be light where I go. I want to dwell in your word. I want to be able to forgive those around me and to bring your love where he's not present. If that is you, I just invite you to lift your hand wherever you are. Just keep your eyes closed. If that is you, lift your hand. Say, Lord, I want to be your disciple. 
want a deeper relationship with you. I want to spend time with you, God. I want you to speak to me, to change me, to transform me. I want to spend time with you. I want to eat with you. I want to hear your voice. If that is you, just say, Lord, here I am. Change me. Build me up. Set me free. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I ask that you look upon every single one that is here today. I ask that you look upon every single person, Lord God, that is raising their hands and those that maybe were afraid to raise it. Father, you know the hearts. And Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that your Holy Spirit may come upon every single one of us today. In the name of Jesus, I pray that your Holy Spirit, Lord God, may come and begin to fill our hearts with your love. Love for your word. Love for you. Love for your church. Love for the things that you love. Love for people, Lord God. Love, Lord God, for my family. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we pray and we ask, Lord God, that you may bring a transformation to the mentality of this congregation. That you may bring a transformation to the mentality, Lord God, of the, everyone in this place. That we may become truly your disciples so that we may go and we reflect, I go. I am the one that will go. I am the one that you expect to go. I am the one that, you, that you're sending out to go, Lord God. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, use me. make a commitment with you today with you to spend time in your word to spend time with someone to be discipled to spend time and make time and pay a prize for God receive all that you have for me all that you want me to be in Jesus name Oh, Heavenly Father. I see a few of you, and I see these walls in front of you. And you're, you're wanting to go. You're wanting to go. Say, go, oh, Lord, I want to go. I, I want to be a disciple, but Lord, there's this wall in front of me. Oh, in Jesus' name. I break every stronghold in your mind. I break every stronghold in your life. In Jesus' name, I break and I take authority and I break the work of Satan in your life. In Jesus' name, every lie that the devil has told you in the name of Jesus, Lord, we expose it to the light. In Jesus' name, Father, I take authority right now today. And devil, I command you, let go of the fathers, let go of the mothers, let go of the husbands, the wives, the children, let go of our families, let go, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, let go, Satan, right now. In Jesus' name. Remove the veils, remove the distractions, that our hearts may long for you, Father, build it up, Lord God. Build our hearts, ignite those flames, Lord God, for you, for your presence, for your spirit, Lord God. Ignite, Lord God, our hearts, a passion for you, God. To be with you, to spend time with you, to be like you, God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.
But the still Lord says, where are all the men? It starts with you. You are the head of the family. It starts with you. It starts with you. Living by example. Making changes intentionally to reflect that of a disciple. It starts with you, all the men. Your wives will follow. Your children will follow after you. But it starts with the men. Being called to be the head and not the tail. To lead. That is saying, where are the men? Where are my soldiers? Where are my pillars? Where are those arrows? Where are those good men? Where are the men? It starts with the men. It begins with the men. I will speak to you, says the Lord. I will reveal things that you do not know. I will reveal my plans to you. I will reveal my treasures to you. I will reveal and give you my wisdom, says the Lord. But you must seek me out day and night, dwell in my word, teach the word to your children, and I will transform your family. Where are the men? The heads and not the tails. The Lord says, what is done, it's done. You cannot change yesterday, but you can change tomorrow. The changes that you make today, you will reflect tomorrow, says the Lord. Look forward, look up ahead, and rise up and shine, for the glory of the Lord has come upon you. Rise up and shine. Let your light be seen. For I'm looking for disciples, says the Lord. Those that will transform families and nations. In Jesus' name, Father, we thank you. Amen. Let's give glory to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I want to tell you something before we close up. To be a disciple does not mean that you have to quit your job and start following someone around wherever they go. No, that does not mean. To be a disciple means to reflect Jesus wherever you are. God has called all of us to different spheres and different circles of influence. Are we being a disciple in that circle of influence, in that sphere?